Welcome to LOA Today. Walt Thiessen and Life Coach Joel Elston here. Today is Thursday, August the 9th, 2018, 8 a.m. Eastern Time, your first daily dose of happy for this Thursday. We hope your Thursday's off to a great start. Of course, we hope that every single day, but we especially hope it on this day, because today is today. Today is now. There's no other better, better time than now to hope it, so we hope it for today. Isn't that true, Joel? I mean, we always hope it for now, right? Well, I think so. Um, <laughs> it, 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 I, I, I sort of thought that was a whole lot of nows in that statement. But, um, <laughs> it, 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 <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, but, I, but, I forgot. But, uh, it's early. I shouldn't be throwing so much like that at you this early in the morning. I forgot. Sorry. <laughs> exactly. I, I was trying to put the commas in the right place in my head. But uh, if, you, if you mess those commas up, Walt, we could be in all kind of problems. But the 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 now, you know, the, the concept of, of – like we often talk about, you know, the power of now or, or right now, the relevance of today is where your power lies, period. It. It's just, it's just, you, you know, you break it all down to uh, everything else. And w- when you operate in today, in that moment of today, that's where every ounce of your power exists. You're, you're, there's a weakness in, in the past and there's a weakness in the future, but there's there's only power in right now. And that's, that's the, uh, there's helplessness on either side of that. And that's, that's what it, it's such a, 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 a subtle piece of it, but it's such a, uh, a key point to the, how you use the law of attraction. And, and now is it. You make, you make it sound like almost like it's a uh, water hole in the middle of a golf course where the green is the now. And uh, what was the word you used? The, 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 like it's surrounded by water. So it's like water hazards all the way around. Helplessness. I think that's what you called it. So there's helplessness right. all the way around. Right. Yeah. That sounds like a tough right. hole, a really tough hole. Well, if you've ever seen me play golf, that would be an, that would not even be a possibility. I mean, it is a really ugly, ugly, ugly. Ugly, to okay. Play golf. <laughs> well, then we won't yeah, ask you to play it, golf. There is a, yeah, there, there's very few positive law of attraction experiences of me in golf other than not playing it. So, uh, I, you'd probably appreciate this. I had a friend many years ago who found golf to be so boring, he thought they should change the rules so that you could tackle the guy when he's getting ready to putt. I thought you'd appreciate that one. Now, then, then, then I would be on board. It, it, <laughs> there's several sports that would benefit from that. I, I, I've always thought soccer and hockey would benefit greatly from being able to uh, 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 tackle. You know, uh, that would be great. You know, it, 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 you know, take out the goalie right before the shot. That would really make it an exciting sport. Uh, <laughs> so. The final score would be three to two with five arrests. So <laughs> exactly five arrests and four concussions. But, That's uh, right. So yeah, but but it, it is really a, a, a again a great uh, you know when you look at all the the, the surrounding stuff. You know, our topic today we uh, you know I, I have in two weeks from yesterday I will be speaking in my at my hometown's chamber of commerce. Uh, the the. The sort of to me that's coming full circle. That's that's mm. the first time. Uh, for those that know my my life story, uh, you know, the the concept of uh, me falling horribly in my my severe addiction and building my life back up, uh, it's sort of coming full circle. This marks uh, you know one time left my my hometown of Plant City, Florida, in disgrace and was embarrassed to be seen there. And and now that I'm I'm returning to address the Chamber of Commerce, it's uh, uh, it, it, you know, there's very few times I speak that I get nervous anymore, but that it's one of the ones that I think, you know, mm-hmm. I'm like, wow, that, that, that represents so much in, in my journey. And I'm very excited to be able to do that. And, and, and I, I'm doing, uh, the topic of, of the power of your inner dialogue, uh, the, the concept that, uh, your inner dialogue is probably the key player in, in the law of attraction and really everything in your life. It, it, it is, it is the most powerful source of energy that we're in control of. Uh, and most people don't do not realize that that is where the law of attraction begins. And, mm. and so I, I use that. This is a talk that I do often to corporations and, and people that I'm doing consulting with and, and meeting with it is learning to understand just how incredibly powerful what you tell yourself all day is that that is that is your reality there is nothing else on the planet that is more your reality than what you tell yourself every day 
That is true, isn't it? And the power of the uh, of an inner dialogue. Inner dialogue is not something we normally think about in everyday life. I mean, people who are into self help and so forth, they're familiar with that concept. But somebody who's just kind of in the normal mainstream, inner dialogue. What are we talking about? What what inner dialogue? If if you're sitting there right now, you're probably listening, saying, "Oh God, what's Joel going to ramble on about?" <laughs> That's your inner dialogue. That that is. That is your brain talking to yourself. It, it, it's a voice. Uh, you know, there, there, I've heard m- many gurus will often debate where that voice is coming from. I think it's sort of an irrelevant point. Uh, it, is, it, is it your brain? Or is your mind? Is your mind your brain? You can get really deep in just that subject. It's irrelevant today. Uh, the topic of inner dialogue is focusing on when you're alone or when, or when you're driving or when you're in the office. It's not what you're saying verbally that matters. It is what you're saying internally, where you're having a conversation with yourself, uh, where you're, where you're thinking about your fears, what's keeping you from doing things, the, the negotiation you have with your brain about why you can't do something or, or what doesn't work. I had a, uh, I have multiple occasions to really, you know, with work with people on adjusting their inner dialogue. There's a term called neuro linguistic programming, and um, and that is so hard for me to say in the morning. Um, mm-hmm. the, just say NLP. That's just, okay. NLP. We we got NLP. That's N- fine. Yeah, yeah. N- NLP is 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 the common uh, reference to that. And and that is a that is not nearly as complicated as it sounds. It's it's basically in programming your inner dialogue. It's readjusting your inner dialogue. And in the beginning. When you start talking about that, people don't realize just how important that is because when you wake up, you, know, you, you have conditioned yourself to believe certain things about your life and your reality. So you repeat that self to you. And then when you, when you want to step out of your comfort zone, you get uncomfortable and your inner dialogue then pulls you back to your comfort zone. Now, you don't want to try that. There's failure attached to that. There's, there's struggle there's suffering. There's all this stuff attached to being out of your comfort zone is what your inner dialogue is telling you. It's a protective mechanism that actually is a defeating mechanism. And it's, it's, it's your greatest ally or your worst enemy. And again, you're in charge of which one and that you, you can control your inner dialogue. Your inner dialogue will lie to you and you can accept that, or you can call out your inner dialogue and it it eventually will adapt to your reality will adapt to what you believe. I am a loser. I lost everything. I, uh, I can't do anything right. I'm not successful. I don't have money. I will never have money. I will not have a relationship. I'll, those are things that you are telling yourself and you, you explain to yourself why that's true. And you start repeating internally all the mental things that convince you that those are facts. And so you do that throughout a day long enough That affects your subconscious. Your subconscious is responding to that. So that becomes your subconscious is reality. That's the emotion you're putting out there. And that's where the law of attraction comes in. It's picking up on the I'm a loser. I'm defeated. So the law of attraction says, okay, let's see. Your order is you're a loser and everything's uh, destroyed. And that's that's the environment you're seeking. So let me give you more of that. Mm -hmm. And that's what the law of attraction delivers. And and that, that is sort of the key as we move forward when I'm working with corporations and trying to change a um, um, sort of a corporate environment or a culture where people have a negative self-defeating way of dealing with things is it very is it's very much uh, pervasive in almost every corporate environment I've been in where there's a negative dialogue amongst the the staff and most people have a negative inner dialogue and they forget what their mission is. Um, I addressed a, uh, a, a, a organization. I often don't have time permission to share the name. So I try to filter that if I'm, but I addressed an organization that works with, uh, uh, youth, handicapped youth and, uh, and foster care youth and various groups. And they have a, a, a large, uh, group of employees that spend out that they, they spend a lot of time out uh, in the field working with kids and and you know that they're not the highest paid people in their field most of them have you know uh, master's degrees and they're on the lower end of the scale of pay for people with a master degree uh, they, they have uh, ridiculous expectations sometimes their caseload is 
you know, 35 kids and they're expected to see a kid once a month. Uh, they have multiple reports to file on each kid. So they have a very difficult job. And the, the pervasive thought with amongst that crew is it's an impossible job. It's overwhelming. We're underpaid. And that's what they start to believe. So most of them hate their job. They hate their environment. So when I'm addressing all of them, I, I, that group in particular, I try to help them identify their inner dialogue of why are you here? You obviously did not get into this field for the financial reward. So why are you, you, you want to make a living, but you didn't say I'm going to go work with uh, indigent children through Medicaid and expect to make a fortune. So why are you, why are you focusing on the stuff that you knew it was going to be? Right. It's a, it's a paper pushing environment. So why are you focused on what, what are you there to do? Really? You're, you're affecting a child's life. And, and, and then once you get them on track with their inner dialogue and, and get them to look at things differently, then their reality starts to change. The same job that sucked is now a job that I am on a mission. And the only difference between a job that sucks and being on a mission and, and this is your life's work is your attitude toward it. That's true. Although, interestingly enough, we often believe that these inner dialogues, these little voices that we hear, are outside of our control. And yet, as you point out, they right. are within our control. There, there, there's a uh, sort of a disharmony that goes on there. You know, there's, there's on the one hand, on the other hand. And how do you resolve that on the one hand, on, on the other hand uh, paradox? Yes. Well, that, that, that's where you challenge yourself. And, and again, we, we, we've we talked about this loosely over the last several weeks in, in, uh, in, uh, on our show, but there's also a societal approach to sort of supporting that uh, your inner dialogue isn't your, your drive, it isn't your responsibility, it, it's because of what happened to you. And my belief, and, and what I think most people, will, when they really get into this process, do believe, what happened to you is, is certainly not your fault or in your control. Your response to it remains in your control. Very important difference to understand that. You can change that inner dialogue and how you look at things. Um, you know, I often tell the story, and I'm going to repeat the story over and over and over again, but how, how I had life events that seemed to be totally uh, – Totally out of my, which they were totally out of my control mentally. I was I was on a train <laughs> right. wreck in life years ago. Yeah, uh, and then events happened that had actually when I reevaluate were necessary events. So they went from traumas to necessary uh, learning events, and I I don't view them negatively anymore. All that changes my perspective of that. The worst things that ever happened to me are now some of the most uh, the greatest teaching moments of my life. Uh, Big stuff, and I'm in charge of how I view that. Um, I, I, I told a story not too terribly long ago on the show uh, about two people who uh, I was working with. As ironic this happened, but they both had their condominiums burned down. Not not they're not remotely connected. Different sides of the country. Um, they both had lost everything. They both uh, neither one had lost anything. It like harm, nobody was harmed. No pets were lost. There was not all that happened while they were not home. Their condominiums burned down. They lost everything. One of them remains to this day. Literally, I talked to him this week. He remains in therapy for the trauma of his condominium burning down. Mm, wow. The other, the other thought it was one of the greatest things that ever happened. He made money. <laughs> he got to move. He 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 only viewed. He said he said God just gave me delivered exact. He said, I never thought of my condominium would burn down. He said, but I, I literally made $100,000 when insurance was done. Wow. Um, and, and, and he said, I, he, said I, he looks at it as like a great opportunity to change. The other was a total victim of, of, of what happened. And the only difference between the two people are how they're viewing it. The same set of circumstances took mm. place. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it just shows how easy it is to get into that. That trap, it's really a trap, isn't yeah. it? When, when we believe that it's outside of our control and that, you know, these things happen and, and there's nothing I can do about it. That, that's a trap that we put ourselves into. It, it really is. I, one, one of the things when I first moved to the Richmond area, I, I, I don't watch. It's been years. Right now, it's been two years, I believe, since I've been watching any news. Uh, but I, I turned on the local news. I moved to the area uh, several years ago. And one of the first shows I remember is, is this lady, very nice lady, was being interviewed on camera. It was 
if, if it was, I, I, I would like to say it's a live interview, but I'm not exactly sure, but I, it, it's really sort of irrelevant, but it, it, she, she's having the interview with someone and, and her and her kids, she's a single mom with two kids and her home burned down. And, and there was nobody home. They, again, they lost nothing, but every, they lost everything, but they lost nothing, if that makes any sense. Mm-hmm. And she, you know, she had insurance. So the, the, the uh, reporter doing her job uh, was interviewing his ma'am, you know, what are you going to do? And her response was, oh, we're going to stay with friends for a couple of days. We'll get the insurance check. And we'll go get another place. Uh, the kids are, you know, actually the kids are excited because they're going to be able to upgrade from the old Xbox to the new Xbox. <laughs> and so the, the one, and, so the reporter kept trying to bring her back. But how does it feel to lose everything? How does it feel to lose your pictures of your children? And her response was, well, I actually have all my pictures backed up on the Internet. It, they're on, and, you know, it's stored. So I haven't really lost anything. I can print out all the pictures I want, and we can always buy new clothes. I'm focusing on the fact that no one was lost. Our dog happened to be at the vet that day. Uh, so really, it was a sort of a miracle we lost no, no one was harmed, including our dog, and we're really sort of grateful. So she sort of tried, and finally the reporter said, "But ma'am, you think you're in shock?" Or and and the lady looked at her, goes, "I know you want me to cry because that's what gets people to watch the news and tell me how so- sorry." She said, "I am sorry my house burned down, but I'm so much more grateful that I did not lose a family member. I, I'm financially going to be fine because I have insurance." But you're wanting me to break down and sob on TV because that's the promo you're going to put on to get everybody to watch. And mm-hmm. they, they, they cut away at that point because the lady was so correct that they, they, they want the reporter was trying to get the lady's inner dialogue changed to that of a victim versus that of a survivor. And we all face that along the way. You can look at life's failures and say, I am just not successful at anything. Or you can say, I have survived all of these failures. I have turned my life around I'm in the process of moving on. I'm incredibly resilient. That's the same person. It's just how that inner dialogue is addressed. And the only person that can do that is you. I can tell you how to do it, but you have to be able to do it. And so it's a step-by-step process. How do you change it? With it, 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 and it's, it's, it, we want to make it complicated. Like, okay, there's this, there's this long equation to changing it, um, or the truth is, you just change it. And when you find yourself varying from the, the positive uh, uh, view of things, you immediately stop yourself and go, "That's not accurate. The reality is this." And you eventually, when you change it enough, that becomes your reality. To what extent does self-confidence play a role in this? Because I would think that if your self-confidence is low, you're going to be much more uh, conducive, shall we say, to being influenced by that reporter who's trying to make you change your inner dialogue to feel bad. Whereas if your self-confidence is good, well, then you're going to be a lot more resistant to it. Right. And, and, and you know, the self-esteem, self-confidence factor is, is massive. But again, that, that is, to me, that is driven by your internal dialogue. Uh, so the, the, you're as self-confident as you believe you are, or is your, your, your self, you know, conscious as much as you feel you are either way, you're in charge of that again with your internal dialogue. Do I, which way do I go? So which you're, direction do I go? So you're really suggesting yeah. that even somebody yeah. who's, who's got low self-confidence, low self-esteem, they can still take control and they don't have to wait around for it either. Absolutely. They can just do it right away. It, it it's an instant process that, that, that can, can, once you, you know, it's easy to look at our defeats, our defeats or our losses, uh, they literally hang over our head and, and they, they are instantly recalled. They're stored in a part of the brain that has like, up, oh, up, oh, sorry, sorry. Remember these times you've done this and you failed. You're right. I have no, Yes. Why would I be the one to succeed? Why would I, you know, and you start all that stuff yeah. and it's a, it's a conditioned response. But when you realize I can pull up whatever memory I want to associate with that, it, it, it you know, there's an association way of, of you can change the way you associate. When I immediately, when I say, Walt, picture a lemon. Well, instantly you were associating a big yellow lemon that, you know, you, you see, you, you didn't have to, you didn't have to go and search deeply for that. That was brought up immediately when I said it. Oh yeah, instantaneously. Because you have that. 
Yeah, you have all that stored right there. Now, if, if we want to spend, now, this is obviously ridiculous, but if I want to spend a lot of time on this and I want to start showing you a peach and calling it a lemon, then we could spend a lot of time convincing you that this, and then you would start thinking, Okay, wait a minute. Well, which one's really a lemon or a peach? Or then you have the mm. debate going on. When I said lemon, there was no debate. You knew what a lemon was. If I want to make it a big deal and go on and on and on, at least you're going to have to process that later. It's the same thing. When I understand I'm self-confident, I, I have great self-esteem, I know that I can never be defeated permanently. I will have loss. I'll have defeat, but I will not be defeated. I've proven that over my lifetime. I have overcome the most impossible odds. I, I've, I've, I've survived the most unsurvivable mindsets. I've lost, and again, I'm not saying this with arrogance. I'm saying that you know, I've, I've, I've lost stuff that I never imagined that I could lose or people that I could lose. And while those were horrible events, a lot of them, I'm still here. And I'm still surviving. I'm still thriving. So I am a survivalist, you know, not in the way of the, you know, the, the MREs and go block yourself in the basement. People. Right, right. But right. Uh, I'm a survivor of life. I'm a survival. I, I, I'm a survivalist specialist in a sense. Life has thrown everything at me and I'm still here. And I, I challenge our audience members to believe no matter what they feel about themselves, you're, they are also 100% successful, if they're listening to this, at surviving the unsurvival or you know, the unthinkable. You, you have been through a lot, but yet you're still here. You're given this shot of another day, and that's your perspective of, of things. That's your perspective of you're in charge of that. And that internal dialogue and your perspective, you, you know, they, they, they are basically one and the same. Your perspective is controlled by your internal dialogue, which has a direct effect on that subconscious that we talked about. Right. Yeah, that's true. And by the way, I want to take a moment to ask our subscribers, because we're talking about people listening in, and I want to ask our existing subscribers, people who listen to us regularly, um, we're doing an experiment um, this week and, and early next week. We're asking all of our subscribers at, at least once to just go onto your social media and post something or you know go, put out a tweet or something about LOAToday.net. Just include the phrase LOAToday.net. The reason we're doing this is we want to see, this is like an experiment to see, does this help to drive more people to find out about the show? Because that's really the biggest um, thing that we have going on right now. We know that our our existing listeners love the show. I mean, the, the listening rates, Joel, are just sky high. We're just trying to find what's it going to take to bring more people in. So this is like a little experiment. And uh, we would really appreciate if our regular subscribers just take a moment, go to you know Facebook or Twitter or whatever you do, whatever your favorite places to go, and just post something that, ha that includes the phrase LOAToday.net in it, because we want to see what kind of results we're going to get out of that. We think that's going to help actually boost uh, not only the traffic, but the number of people who listen to the show. And for those who are not yet subscribers, we urge you to become a subscriber. Um, you know, the vast majority of our listeners do subscribe so they can get all this great content, like what you're hearing from Joel today. And uh, it really pays off for them. And it's so simple to do. The the instructions are right on the homepage of our website at LOAToday.net. Uh, it takes about a minute to do. And when you're done, you get this constant daily stream of episodes coming right to your smartphone. So take a moment to subscribe and share the fact that you did that. And uh, by the way, we also like hearing from you, too. We don't, Joel, you and, I, you and I don't get a whole lot of people calling in, but we would love to have you call in and talk to us. Maybe you're picking up on something that Joel is saying and, uh, because you're listening live. Most of our listeners are listening to the, to the after recording, but some people like to listen live right there on the homepage. And you know, if you're one of those people, the instructions on how to contact us are right there. You can call by phone or you can connect by the Zoom platform. There are a number of ways to do it. But you know, give us a call sometime during a, a live broadcast. We'd love to hear from you. So, Joel, and, getting, yes. getting and, back. And, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Well, it's 8.24 a.m. Uh, Eastern Time on mm -hmm. Thursday morning, August 9th. So mm -hmm. people, uh, you know, I, I actually have heard so much of it. Now, was I listening live or was I listening <laughs> recorded? So, it, it, you know, in reality, if you look at your clock and it's roughly that time, I'm maybe 30 seconds off there, <laughs> uh, feel free. Yeah. Give us a call. Follow those instructions. We would love to have your input. Uh, uh, it's something that I eventually see the show evolving and I, I would love for us to eventually get to a point where we have some callers 
who bring up topics or issues that they're dealing with. And then we can sort of have a forum, sort of a collaboration or a mastermind meeting in a sense, mm-hmm. live uh, and, and on, on air and help, help people use law of attraction techniques to get, get through two things in, that are dealing with their life. So, uh, yeah. I, I would, that's where I see the, the show going one day. I think so too. I think it's going to be really fun when it does that. It's already started to in a small way, but I think it's going to become that in a big way. And that's so much fun to think about, Joel. I got to tell you that combined with doing it with all you guys, with all my co-hosts, uh, cause I'm, I love doing it with every single one of you. So combining the two together, so we get regular callers and doing this. I mean, that to me is Nirvana. So I'm looking forward to that. Absolutely. So getting back to what you were talking about, um, you're, basically what this comes down to is we know that we have an inner dialogue. We know huh, most of us are well aware of it, and, and many of us are saying it's driving me freaking crazy, this inner thing that goes on. It's like I can't shut the darn thing up. But you're making the very strong case that, well, we can not only shut the, shut the darn thing up, but we can replace it with something that we like. We can change the program. That, that's a pretty radical statement. Well, and, and I guess, you know, it's funny when you say it's pretty radical. I, I guess to the, to the average person, it would be. It's such an accepted belief system for me. It's almost shocking to think it's radical um, <laughs> because it's so, it's so basic in my, in my understanding in life. And, and I, you know, and, and one of the things that we're, where I'm finding that, that it, it doesn't serve me well uh, is when I'm working with clients, there's a, there's a certain type of client that will attempt to, engage my services and I find myself exceptionally uh, unhelpful. I mean, it, in, in the sense that they're not willing to change the inner dialogue. They're bought into their inner dialogue. They don't like the concept because when I tell you the inner dialogue is in your control and the power of it, if you're sold onto the concept that you're helpless and that you have no hope and that there's nothing there for you, if that's your, if that's what you believe, me telling you that you have other options kills your narrative. It it it, it takes away your excuses. True. Oh yeah. And, and that's and, huge. And, and there are lots that's of excuses. Huge. We get we get we get plenty of reasons for excuses. I mean, like uh, in the world of politics, in the news, even in the, the entertainment realm, and in all, almost any public kind of forum where there's some kind of discussion going on. Um, and we're seeing it particularly in politics today. We, we've got two different camps here in the United States who are struggling mightily to get us to change our inner dialogue to fit their narrative. And I mean, it's almost like it's a battle for your for your inner voice that they're looking for, that they're they're engaging, and they're trying to get you. Okay, no, no, you got to buy into my way of thinking. The other the other side is the fake news. We're the real news. No, 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 we're the real news. They're the fake news. You got to listen to our side. You got to talk our way. It's like this ongoing thing. Well, and, and one of the techniques that they're employing, uh, and, and, and again, it's such a negative world that I, I, I don't engage in often, but uh, you know, the pol- po- political stuff, the news, there is a constant, if I say it enough, I'm going to affect your internal dialogue. There's one side, this is fake news. This is a massive conspiracy to make me look bad. Or this is a massive right. conspiracy to make our political party look bad. And there's there's a, a shadow government. There's this going on. Then there's the other side that uh, the, uh, the the other people are evil, and all they want to do is is uh, you know do these wars. And so it, it, there's an extreme view on both sides. Mm. And what what is happening is that ability to look at it from a, a unbiased perspective. Uh, it, it is so it it, it is programming your inner dialogue. That's Mm -hmm. what they're doing. And so that becomes your default mechanism. If you really believe that everything that is written by the media is a conspiracy to destroy what you believe in, and you're, you're one of the ones that's a victim of this, then your inner dialogue, no matter what you hear is going to be filtered. One of the things I love, this is one of the great experiments I I love. And again, this is not getting political. Everybody can, don't worry. I don't try not to do that often. Um, (laughs) One of the things that I heard this, this, this guy was giving a, a public speech and he was trying to give the concept. He was talking similar to what we're talking about, uh, about the programming of the media. And, he, and so he, was, he said, I want to give you some examples. And he went through a list of things. And this is pre-President uh, Trump. This, is, uh, this was a bo- during the Obama administration right after the – in his first term. Mm-hmm. And so 
the guy went through and he read, he said, I want, I want to read some quotes from President Obama. And he read like 15 quotes from President Obama. This is a very conservative crowd. And every quote was a boo. I mean, boo, boo. Mm-hmm. Oh my goodness, I can't believe he wants to say that. And then he read 15 quotes from George W. Bush. Yay, President Bush, he, he, he was a great president. He loved this. And then after he got all that, he told them and he said, the truth is all 15 quotes, reverse them. They were President Bush's uh, <laughs> quotes were President Obama's quotes. He said, the fact is you were programmed, you were pre-programmed to hate automatically what, what was being said because of the person. And it was, it was so, and it's so true because when you, when you turn on, for example, again, and I'm going to say it right down the middle. So I'm not, it doesn't matter to me which one. When you turn on Fox News, the Fox News has a narrative that they're trying to project to you. Right. Then if you turn on CNN, they almost have the exact opposite narrative. Exactly. That they're trying to do. So what you, what you watch, even if you flip to the other side, like if you're, you're just, all you do is watch Fox News. Then you say, I want to check on what CNN is doing. I can't believe they're lying against all this. Well, the <laughs> truth is that they're both, they're, it isn't, ha, the truth is it has nothing to do with the truth. It's about a programming of your inner dialogue because what, what, Fox, what most people don't realize is Fox News doesn't care. Fox News wants to make money. So they understand that what they're selling, their package of what they're selling, hits a certain age group that is just, they buy into it and they do it. Then CNN realizes there's a, a certain age group or certain group of people they buy it, that buy into their stuff. So they're looking for ratings using their own sort of a, a, a tip to report the news. The truth is they're programming. They're, they're getting your inner dialogue to buy into their view of it. And then in the end, it translates into profits. And, and so when you step back from that, what they're trying to do uh, and, and look at what you're trying to do, you are in charge of your own programming. If you anything you turn on, whether it's a radio station, uh, or or it's going to the movies, or you, you, your your window into the mind is a programming, and your inner dialogue then processes it to make it fit your beliefs. If everything in the world is a conspiracy, if you're a victim of everything, if you're unsuccessful, your inner dialogue will make that happen. It's like, yep, okay, uh, yes, this is clearly what goes wrong. I never, I never get a job. I never have these things, you know, and, 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 you know, I heard a guy the other day say, he, he, he said, this is the lowest unemployment we've had in X number of years. And I still can't find a job. What that means I'm <laughs> even, even more of a loser than I was. Oh before. dear. Ugh. And I'm like, I said, so you're, you're taking the positive news of, of low unemployment. And now you're flipping the switch to an entirely different message. Um, well, yeah, I guess the truth is you, you, your lackluster attempt to get a job and your poor performance in an interview is why you don't have a job. You don't believe you're, you want to do that. He, he's, there's a couple of jobs that he didn't take because that didn't fit his schedule. Well, he has no schedule. You don't do anything. <laughs> you have no schedule, but it didn't fit your schedule. And, and yeah, I don't know if we've ever talked. I know we have. But I don't remember the specifics. Uh, the, the idea that it's easier to get a job when you have a job. Yes. Oh, yes. It's easier to find another job when you're working. It has nothing to do with anything other than your your attitude toward it, the, your your inner dialogue toward it. I'm already working. I have value. People are willing to pay for my services, versus I'm unemployed and then I offer nothing. And that and that energy that's put out there is what people pick up on. Your inner dialogue is is the mastermind behind all of this. And it's, it's your gateway to your subconscious. Uh, I, I am one of the, the things, I don't know if I even told you this, Walt. I'm in the process, on top of the other stuff that I'm doing, I, I really need to stop. Um, <laughs> you have one of the craziest schedules I've ever heard of. Yeah. And so I, I, I didn't, I, I had a couple hours a day I wasn't doing anything. So I decided it's time <laughs> to become a board certified hypnotherapist. So, <laughs> so now. <laughs> And, and, and one of the, and, and I've, I've really been looking into it and, and I, and I really believe that since the subconscious is the direct effect on the emotional output that the law of attraction picks up on, a prop, you know, using hypnosis, it could be a very effective tool to get to the subconscious. 
And, and so this is the inner dialogue right now is a form of self hypnosis when you understand how to use it properly. Mm, yeah. I, w one of the things that really caught my attention in, in what you were talking about there for a bit was you, you mentioned, for instance, the difference between being somebody who has a job and who doesn't have a job uh, and the, the two experiences of going after getting another job and how it's usually so much easier for the person who has the job because of their inner dialogue. Really, what we're talking about there is, is a level of self-confidence. You know, the person who has the job says, well, hey, I got a job. That proves I can get a job. You know, I, I already have the evidence. I'm living the evidence right now. Whereas the person who doesn't have the job says, oh, I don't have a job. I can't get a job. And it, the, the self-talk um, plays out. In the, you know, according to what the experience is. In other words, it's a what is itis kind of thing. This is what is, so so that's the way I'm going to respond to it. And this is where I love the mes one of the messages that Abraham Hicks gives out, which is a belief is a thought that you think over and over again. It, it's also the basis for how propaganda works, right? We're talking about news and, and we're talking about uh, political parties and all that kind of thing. Well, they're basically, both sides are trying to propagandize you by repeating the same thought over and over again, getting you to repeat it in your own inner dialogue, knowing that if you do that, it will become a firm belief in your own way of thinking. They want to, to implant it as an ongoing belief. But like you're pointing out, you don't have to just put up with that, whatever their programming is. You can actually create your own belief. And the way to do that is by changing your own inner dialogue and repeating your preferred inner dialogue over and over again so that you develop that new belief. That's pretty powerful stuff. It is powerful, and, and a lot of times people will dismiss, uh, uh, again, without without opinion on this or, or trying to offer opinion on this. You know, I've heard people you know, talk about, well, you know, President Trump doesn't know what he's doing with all his tweeting. Well, whether it's good, bad, or indifferent, he's very effective with it. He will say he something is. over and over and over, it, 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 and he tries to make it as shocking as possible so it gets as much attention. But embedded in the message is fake news, no collusion. This, that, this. So then that becomes a narrative that people are saying. Right. And, and his base, it particularly responds to that. So you literally will hear him tr tweet something. And then when they interview his followers or his, his uh, supporters, uh, they will then mimic exactly what he said. And, and, and it's, it's, it's amazing that, you know, he is actually, President Trump is one of the absolute best presidents that I'm aware of or politicians I'm aware of of using the law of attraction. He he really, whether you agree with him or not, he is an expert at the law of attraction. Oh he is. He is a very, very skilled, deliberate creator. No doubt about it. Yeah. I mean it doesn't matter whether you're and, in favor and, of him I mean, or he, against he, him. It's just he he just is. It's yeah. just true. And, and that and that's something that, that a lot and, and I, I don't mean again we, we we don't do the political stuff here. It's not our, our mission to but but he, he believes what he says, or he creates an inner dialogue, repeats it over and over, and and he, you know, it, it's that you just see it how he's done it. He, he never doubted, you, you know, any of this stuff. He just keeps saying, and it becomes his truth. And the more he repeats it, the more people believe him, and the more he believes it. Uh, it's such an in, incredible uh, belief system, and I'm I'm very excited that you know that first of all that that. I have that ability. Now, I'm not saying how he's he's spinning it or whatever, uh, but I have that ability to you do to make do my own. That's you have that ability. That's how you climbed out of your hole all those years ago by leveraging this fact: the fact that we can control the inner dialogue and use that that ability to change our belief system so that we start seeing the world differently, so we start interacting in a better way, and end up improving our circumstances and attracting into our lives what it is we've been wanting to attract all along. Yes. Yes. And that, that, that is, that is such a, that's why I, I, I love this whole belief in, in living. We started talking about now earlier when we were, remember right. when you said now about 72 right. times, and, right. you know? Uh, it, yeah. So we, we started with a lot of nows in the beginning and I love that we started with that because the, the right now at this moment, and, and this is how you begin, you know, a direct, if you're sitting in your car or you're listening to this at home and life's kicking your butt and you're, you, you believe life's kicking your butt, you can stop that. You can stop that, that downward spiral thinking and say, wait a minute, I'm here. I'm tuned in. And at this exact moment, 
at wherever, whatever time it is or wherever you're listening to this, whether it's a month after we did this or not, at this exact moment, everything I'm thinking is in my power to control. I can, I can change how I'm viewing things. I can look at it through a different lens. I can adjust my own lens. Instead of looking at what's wrong today, what is right today? Instead of looking at my defeats, let me look at my victories. And, you know, even if you have nothing but defeats, you can look at the fact that I have survived all of these defeats. I'm still here. There's a reason. There's a point. And then when you can build on that, that's where it goes. People pick up on that. The energy that law of it, it isn't just what you're inviting, but the energy that you're putting out, the energy that people pick up on. People want to be surrounded by that. And and they, they it it's attracts when you sit down and interview, you can the energy you put out is so much more important than what you say. Uh, it, it, it really is. It, it's, uh, th- there's a, a guy that got a job the other day that he, we've been working really hard in his inner dialogue. He sat down with this local insurance company and, uh, and, and, and he basically, they, he did, he, he did a wonderful job in the, in the one-on-one interview with the, the there, he was being interviewed by three managers. He did an incredible job with that. Well, then they gave him the, the, the testing part where, you know, they, they gave him a scenario where he had to add up numbers and give a quote over the phone and, he totally blew it on that. Uh. And he, he almost went into a neck. And he said, then he, asked, then he reminded himself, but I, I knocked the interview out of the park on the first one. So he, then he mm. met with the same group afterwards. And he said, uh, he said, well, one of my strengths is the fact when I really mess up, I can understand I messed up. He said, I realized before we even start, to, I, I, I totally destroyed that second part. It was, it was something I, I lost. I lost my confidence. I, I I didn't know what I was doing, and then I sort of folded. The fact that I could identify that, I am capable of changing it. If you let me go back in there right now, I will do it again perfectly and prove that my my strength is my resilience and the ability to change. Wow, good for him. They said, and they were like, "We don't need you to go back in there and do it again. <laughs> you have a job." Oh, that's great! Fantastic, and. And what sold him, what his belief, if, if he would have been in, in, in that negative, you know, putting out that negative energy stuff, self-defeating, hugely self-defeating. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Boy, that, that's a really good example of how, just how powerful our control, that, and I use that word advisedly, our control that we already have over our own inner dialogue does make a difference. Because he could easily, like you said, he could have gone the bad direction. He could have been on the dark side of the forest, so to speak. And he just, he owned up. He said, you know what, I screwed up. But I, if you let me do it again, I can, I can ace it this time. He, he just, he, he refused to allow his inner dialogue to be changed by circumstances. He insisted that his inner dialogue was going to be what he wanted to be. Boy, more power to him. I'm just impressed by the guy. Yeah, yeah, and 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 that that's when you realize you own it. That's when you realize you have it, mm. and and you have this thing that is inside of you that goes beyond what you think is control. Most people think, well, that test blew it out of the water. No, that one blew it out of the water. It it, it 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 what what got you the job? The negative is you screwed up the test. The positive was your attitude toward it, and that's mm-hmm. what they're looking for. That's the intangible that is picked up. That's the energy that is picked up on. There's an old song from the disco era back in the late 1970s, early 80s. I think it's by Donna Summer called I Will Survive. And and that's what I was thinking about when you were describing how even when you're in the worst possible circumstances, you still have the ability to turn things around, to change your perspective. You can decide there's a good thing going on. Even if I can't find anything else that's good going on, I can find that. I, I will survive. I'm still alive. I'm, I am breathing. I, as long as I'm breathing where there's life, there's hope. You can start with that, even if you have nothing else. That's really powerful. It, yeah, and 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 it really, it, and there's 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 all, also another way to look at it. There there was a time when I had I, I was turning my life around. I was a, a few years into turning my life around, and I was leaving Anna Maria Island, the place I loved, to go move to South Carolina to take to run a treatment center there. That I did not want to go. Um, I want, I didn't want to leave my comfort zone on my little island. Um, it was, it was an awesome place to live. However, I, my next step would be, I was sort of in a position I had nowhere to go, but there. So I had to go. 
Well, to be honest with you, Walt, I, I it took me a while to get this mindset, but in that move, in that from Rock Hill to Rock Hill, South Carolina, from Anna Maria Island, Florida, I moved my worldly possessions in the back seat of a, a, a sedan. That wow. was it. Yeah. I had some clothes. I had nothing. And people said, well, Joe, that's a negative. I'm sorry you're going through that. You know, one of the, one of the most freer, freer days of my life was that day. Really? I was, I was, I, I, I love that. I love the fact that I could pick up and move on an instant. I now have semi tractor trailer loads of crap. <laughs> it's, it, it, uh, there is, I'm, I'm looking at, I'm looking at, I'm in my house right now and I'm looking around. I don't need all this stuff. Where's, why is all this stuff even here? It's, 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 it's ridiculous. And, and I mean, I mean that in a, a very positive way that I don't need all this stuff. In fact, not that I'm planning on moving, but if I ever move again, I've already made up my mind. I'm not taking anything but my clothes and not even all of those. And I'm just going to go get new stuff. The least of my, I don't need all that. Those possessions mean nothing. That day that I moved from Florida to South Carolina, I was I was not encumbered by stuff. I wasn't encumbered by. I could have gone anywhere and moved that day. The freedom attached to that was awesome. Mm. And and so so I look at that time of my life. At the time, it seemed so helpless, but at the same time, it looking back, it seemed so free. And 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 that's. Again, my perspective, which is my inner dialogue, is controlled by that. Well, you had a choice. You could choose which way you were going to look at it. You could choose it to look at it like you were losing everything, or you could choose to look at it the way you did, which is, I am free. I can just move on a dime. I don't have to think twice about it. How nice is that? When, when I was driving up, uh, once, once I got to, uh, uh, for those that would know the route, I took 95 you know, up to whatever that cuts over to 77. Uh, 77 goes from north of Columbia, South Carolina, all the way to the Rock Hill area. Mm -hmm. um, and I remember, I don't know why I remember this mindset. Again, I, was, I had nerves. I was moving. I didn't want to move. But yet a side of me, well, as soon as I started heading north on 77, I was a little over an hour away from where I needed to be. And there was a side of me, there's a sign inside of me or whatever, there's something that came out and, and I was thinking about the Indiana Jones movie or something, at the very end of the movie where he's riding off in the sunset and victory or, or mm -hmm. the, on to the next adventure. And, and, and the end of the movie, at that, I forget which one it said, and the adventure continues. Is oh, what right. It said, dot, yeah. dot, dot, dot. Yeah. And I'm going up that road, I'm going, and the adventure continues. I get up every day and the adventure continues. There's, there's freedom in that. The, the, when I was when when I was incarcerated and they shut the door behind me, I, I had a perspective of, well, this is finally done. I finally am dealing with the worst thing that I've ever had to face, and that was the worst thing I had to that point in my life. And I'm going to deal with it. So it wasn't fear, it wasn't uh, uh, disgrace. It was like, okay, thank God, this is over. That was my inner dialogue. I'd already started working on it at that point. And today, whatever comes up. I try to readjust that dialogue. I try to, it, 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 and, I, and I'm, I'm a human being. I don't do this perfectly every day. But what I do find myself capable of every day is at some point when my dialogue has turned negative, I can flip the switch back quickly. Mm. And that is, that, is, that is something that I can do. I can't always stop that negative dialogue from happening, but I can quickly, when I identify it, flip it back. So it's what, instead of losing days at a time in negative thought or, or negative uh, preoccupation, I, I have the ability to say, I, 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 you know, now it's down to at worst a couple of hours. It's funny too, when you said, and the adventure begins, I'm, I'm hearing John Williams, Indiana Jones theme, da, 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 da. You're playing in yeah, the background, exactly. right? That, that, <laughs> that was playing in my head as I was going up. <laughs> and and I, I remember it, it you know, the, the, those orange letters that they use, right. the, the script that, that, that they, you know, at the end, I, I remember it, it and I, I don't know why that popped in my head. The adventure continues, that music played in my head, and I'm like, well, this is, this is freedom. This is, I'm, I'm starting a brand new life in a brand new state, uh, and, and, you know, it, it, was, it was exciting. Isn't that an interesting word to use about something that you, you originally start off with feeling dread about? It became exciting. What a what a powerful yeah. uh, testimony to what happens when you change the way you think about something. Well, in, the, in that inner dialogue, here's here's the, the excitement anxiety 
process is one of the uh, first things I was giving a, a I, was, I think the first or second public speech I was giving, I was giving a, a, a talk to a group of uh, college students at uh, VCU uh, here in Virginia. And uh, I, I had the top similar topic. I don't remember the exact name of the, the topic then, but it was a similar topic to what we're talking about with the inner dialogue. And, you know, there, there, there was a few hundred college kids there. And I wasn't nervous, nervous, but I had anxiety about talking publicly. I, I, I believe so much in what I say. There's not a, I, I'm, and I, I'm, I sort of embrace the idea that, yeah, if I stutter, some will ask you, ah, whatever, it doesn't matter. <laughs> so I don't usually get too nervous, but I, I, for some reason, again, first time, I think it was 300 people, uh, I was a little nervous. And um, the speaker before me was an older gentleman who, who had done this before and quite a bit. And he gave me the greatest advice that ever helps me with public speaking. It helps me in other areas, too. He said, Joel, he said, anxiety? And excitement are are the same physical reaction in the body. Mm. Your perspective of which one it is is what matters. He said, "You're not an- anxious about being in front of this crowd. You're excited to be here." Mm. That's I'm like, true. Oh my goodness, that was powerful. That yeah. was powerful. And so, so that inner dialogue then could program. Wow, I'm really excited to be here. I, and, and, and that's the first thing I said. I'm, I'm excited <laughs> to be here. <laughs> Internally, I was, I was nervous. <laughs> Butterflies. <laughs> yeah, but I wasn't. I mean, because I stepped up there and I, I viewed it as excitement. If I'm excited about something, I'm not viewing it with dread. But the physical, the body, if you had a ability to monitor the heart rate and the release of various hormones, excitement and, and anxiety produce the exact same reaction physically. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's that's just true. your view of which one's happening. So that that's a great tool, and that's an inner dialogue tool because you get to determine which one that is. Is it exciting or are you anxious about it? That's an interesting point because there are a lot of people who suffer from anxiety just in their regular lives, not going up to speak in front of an audience, but just day-to-day they're dealing with anxiety. What a great perspective to recognize that that anxiety, another word for it, is energy. And that you can, if, depending yeah. on how you look at that energy, that energy could actually be really good if you come at it from the right perspective. Well, and when you're giving, when you, you want a little, um, you know, you want a little excitement. You want to get up there. You want to, if you're giving a, a public speech or you're performing or you're, or even day to day work stuff, if you don't have a little excitement about life, you don't want everything to be, oh, well, here we go. That's when life becomes mundane. You want it something does. like that. You need something to push that envelope. You, performance is increased by 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 challenging and, and feeling and and not not just phoning it in all the time. That's a great point. I'm going to keep that one in mind. Anxiety and energy, are, or excitement, I guess is the word. Anxiety and excitement are basically two sides of the same coin. They're the same thing. It's just two different ways of looking at the same thing. That's really, really important. Right. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's, it's a great tool with, with and I, I, people who do struggle with, uh, uh, when I say struggle, a lot of people with, with no, beyond normal anxiety, there's a, a normal amount and there's people that are debilitated by it. And when they're able to flip that switch immediately to, huh, this isn't bad at all. This is, this is really, I'm excited about being here. I, people have asked me to talk to them. So why would I be nervous? They, they care enough about what I'm saying to make this happen. Mm-hmm. This is exciting. And when you, when you look at that, it's like, wow, this is such a different way of pursuing something that you didn't realize you had. You have this power. Everybody has this power to, 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 to view things how they choose to view them. And and that and the anxiety and the excitement that is one of the and, and there's millions of little things like that. That is one of the simplest fixes of inner dialogue. It's so, funny because as, as you're talking yeah. about that, six years ago, September 26, 2012, was when Louise and I started this podcast, the LOA Today podcast. And I remember feeling that day something that I could have I can I can remember back I could have interpreted that as anxiety. But I turned it into excitement because I was excited. It's like, oh, this is going to be a fun adventure. I don't know what's going to happen. But this is going to be fun. And that's the way it was. And it continues to be fun to this day. But you're right. I mean, that that energy that you feel, if you choose to look at it as excitement rather than anxiety, it really changes it. If I had 
uh, approached that first podcast with the idea of feeling anxious about it, I would never have interviewed you three months later, and we would never have become buddies doing co uh, co hosting the show for years after that. Yes, and that that to me that that's that's so exciting that uh, it is exciting uh, that we have that power, mm. and and you you know no matter what's happening in your life when when you can flip switches internally and 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 adjust that perspective and that inner dialogue to challenge yourself to 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 greater things the excitement of life the not the anxiety of life the excitement of life uh it 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 it, it feels like wow i have i have such an exciting life or it sounds so much better internally than i have such an anxious life mm. um i have an exciting life and 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 once you again choose that, the body responds, the mind responds, the subconscious then says, huh, we haven't been anxious all this time. We're really excited. So it, <laughs> it, it brings excitement. It brings, wow, I, this, this gets us moving forward. It, it gets us to that point where that next step happens and that next step happens. And uh, it, it, I, I don't like living in a world that doesn't have excitement. I, I love what I do. I'm passionate about what I do. I, to see people literally come to you and, and make changes and all people matter uh, when I'm dealing with them, they're, they're, they're all, but this, as particularly the, the, the most defeated, the most uh, helpless, the ones that really don't understand how their power to watch them empower themselves and then just become far beyond what they ever believe. That is, you know, wow. And, and, and I get paid to do that. Wow. <laughs> How's that for a good combination, right? You, could you have imagined yeah, that yeah, all those like, years wow. ago when you when you were uh, in the depths of being a, a, a gambling addict or before when you'd been arrested for what had happened with uh, your father's company and so forth? Could you imagine yourself being into a place where all of a sudden you were making money, helping people climb up from nothing to something? That, that, that must have been inconceivable oh. back then. The, the day on uh, it was the the day before Thanksgiving in 1995. I went before a judge and was found guilty of a felony. And I remember believing I pled guilty to a felony. Mm -hmm. uh, I remember leaving the court saying, "Well, I probably will never be able to do anything other than some basic stuff." I, mm -hmm. But I'm grateful. I, but I, I remain grateful that I was able to overcome this, but I knew I had a big chat, but I could not envision, I could not have imagined having what I have now in my life. And I don't mean just possession wise. I mean, right. my life. Right. Um, uh, and I couldn't imagine all of that. And it, yet here we are, we, we, it is, it is a script that I didn't even have my wildest imagination couldn't have created this. And so I have this, this world that I live in, and all of it changed when I allowed slowly. It's, when you can look back over 20 something years, it, it seems like it was instant to a lot of people. Right, right. But this was a process of simply changing my perspective through inner dialogue change. And when you change your perspective, it changes everything. That's the thing. Yes. I mean, you, 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 did it, you did it just by changing one thought process. Yes. And, and it and it, it it gives you that. And one of the most uh, sad things when I see people that do not have that ability or unwilling, everybody has the ability. When I see people with the unwillingness to step in internally and say, "Let me change this," but they become so dependent on the 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 opposite side of that that they they're not willing to move from it, and then they're they they they're their own. They're their own curse at that point. Mm, yep. Well, this has been great. Thank you for uh, giving us a preview of the talk you're going to give uh, down in Plant City, Florida, in about uh, was it about uh, ten days, fourteen days, something like that. Um, it's been great. Yeah, and, and uh, thirteen days from today. Thirteen days. Okay, there you go. So I, I know you're going to knock it out of the park, but thanks for giving us the preview and and uh, for some. Oh, I should be, before we go. You're a pretty darn good coach. People are probably picking up on that, if they're, especially if they're new listeners. How do they reach out to you if they want to talk to you more in private and in detail? Uh, Joel Elston uh, at gmail.com is the simplest way an email comes in. I always want to email joelelston.com is my website address. Uh, either way, you can get me, and I will get back to you. If I can't help you, I'll find somebody that can. Sounds great. Joel, it's been a pleasure, and I look forward to talking to you next week. You too, my friend. All right. We'll see you all as well next time here on LOA Today. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye.